Well, hello everyone. I'm back again. I'm Adam Meister and this is the VoteMD.info video series. And I'm going to talk about Heather Mazier again today because I received some feedback on Twitter about her. So I thought I'd, I'd just elaborate on some of my thoughts because there is actually a lot to say about the governor's race. Um, real quick, visit VoteMD.info. We've got a lot of videos up there. And I'd also like to say, I just, when I film these videos, I come up with the topics just right before the videos sometimes and everything I'm about to say just comes off the top of my head. So uh, it, it's just, you know, it's from the heart, I guess you can say. Anyway, Heather Mazier, a lot of people out there, people who I respect and who are actually very smart are getting behind her campaign and are really into her. But I have to say there's a certain amount of naivete out there about political races. And I ran for office back in 2007 um, for Baltimore City City Council, for City Council, when I was naive, and to run a race, to be the candidate, to see every aspect of how a race works in Baltimore and Maryland, you you can you, you learn a lot, and that's where my comments on Heather Mazier are are based, and I feel she is like the Ron Paul, some kind of hybrid of Ron Paul from 2008 and 2012. Um, Basically, she's got all these internet supporters, all these people. She's winning the internet. And winning the internet means nothing. It means nothing. You, you end up like Ron Paul. You come in third, fourth, fifth place. Um, you know, you can, you can point to all these polls on the internet where she's kicking butt. Just like Ron Paul, kick butt on the internet. And in the end of the day, those aren't the people who vote. Um, again, in my experience, I had so many people who told me, and by the way, I came in fifth place. I was this idealist, this young idealist, you know, not part of the machine, with no money. That's very important, with no money. And so many people would come up to me and say, oh, Adam, I'm going to vote for you. Or afterwards, oh, Adam, I voted for you. Well, when you look at the statistics, so many of these people who were coming up to me were independents. And independents in the state of Maryland cannot vote in the primary, for, Demo for the Democratic primary. They can't do it. So there are a lot of people out there who right now are saying, oh, I love Heather, and they're still independents, or they're still registered to vote in Pennsylvania, and they're not going to get around to changing anything when the, the election comes around. It, it's a matter, it, trust me about this. So, some of these young, she's got a lot of young people, and the sad part about Maryland politics, the young people do not control the destiny uh, under the current system. The people who vote, are the people who are stuck in places like Lakeview Towers, which is in Baltimore City and Reservoir Hill, where a bunch of, it's a bunch of senior citizens and people who have various injuries or handicapped are stuck in this building. It's, it's you know, it's a state-owned build, whatever. They, they, they depend on the state, the government, subsidized. And in the bottom of this building is where the people of Reservoir Hill vote, actually. So everyone who lives in that building, who never leaves that building, Come election day, you give them some t-shirts, you give them some money actually to, to work for you, and then they vote for you, okay? And guess what? Anthony Brown's supporters, they might not be, they, they don't comment on my videos, they don't comment on things, they don't go crazy on the internet defending their candidate because they're a bunch of old people stuck in, they don't know what the heck's going on in the world who are easily bribed with t-shirts, with walking around money, which this is all legal stuff, with food, you, give, you, you come and talk to them, have a representative talk to them, you give them food. This is how elections are won. It's sickening, but you're going to have to get used to it, okay? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to break this news down to you like this, in this harsh manner, but I have, and go to Lakeview Towers, meet some of the people who are stuck there, who will tell you that they will vote for, you know, if you're Heather Mazier's Supporters, they'll probably say they're going to support her. But come election day, when you can't pay them and you can't give them t-shirts and when you can't give them food, they're going to forget all about you because, you know, they're, they're, they're going to support the guy that they've gotten the most mail from. Anyway, it's sad. It's sad but true. Um, another thing, the, the J June 24th, they're all going to be there. All of the old people are going to be stuck wherever they are, ready to be driven to vote. Or, or they already live in the apartment building where the uh, polling place is. But the young people, some of them are going to be on vacation. You know, they're going to be people that are like, oh, crap, I'm going to be on, they're going to, at the last minute, they're going to be like, oh, crap, I'm going to be on vacation then. I'm going to be in Florida. And they didn't get their absentee ballot. No, they don't even know how to get an absentee ballot. These are the type, I, 
And these are the type of supporters that candidates like Mazir get. I mean, supporters who are not professional voters. Um, one thing I forgot to mention last time, she still has a Midwest accent that's, that's quite noticeable. And a people, some people aren't going to like that at all. I mean, it's a minor thing, but she's not from here. It's obvious. You, you hear her talk, she speak, I mean, it's a Midwest accent. Um, anyway, it, it, the, the Brown supporters, again, online you'll see the Mazir supporters. It seems like there are uh, many of them. The Brown supporters, it's a silent giant. A silent, they're silent, but they're gigantic. They're out there. Um, I'm just reading over my, my notes here. If there's anything else I, I, I had to say. Uh, the final thing is that uh, you might be smart. You might have a lot of internet savvy, but that's that's not going to make the difference in this race. It, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, she doesn't have the money. The money buys the mindless voters, okay? And they make up the majority of the people out there. So I'm sorry to break it down like this for you. Um, Brown is going to destroy her. She is a Ron Paul-like candidate in terms of being a demagogue to certain people um, who, who are on to fringe issues and maybe more than fringe issues. So take care. Visit votemd.info. Thanks.